the Lion of Sodor. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sky was blue and the sun was shining brightly. Thomas was chuffing cheerfully to Brendam Docks. He felt very happy. Thomas had to collect a special special, but he didn't know what it was. Hello, Cranky. Is my special ready? Yes, it is. The mayor is waiting for it at Knapford. You must puff very carefully. Thomas was puzzled. What is it, Cranky? It's the Lion of Sodor. Cinders and ashes, how exciting. I promise to take extra special care of it. I've never carried a real live lion before. When Cranky heard this, he was surprised. No, Thomas, the Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas was too excited to listen to Cranky. He was already puffing proudly out of the docks. Thomas puffed happily along. Then he met Henry. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Bust my buffers. That's exciting. I only have sticky syrup to deliver. Suddenly, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I promise to take extra special care of my lion. I think he might really like sticky syrup. Could I have some for him, Henry? Of course. Thomas's engineer poured some sticky syrup into the lion's crate. Thank you, Henry. I have to hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Henry was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes! Thomas has made a mistake! Stop, Thomas! The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop. And he didn't listen. Next, Thomas met Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Flat my funnel. How exciting. I only have to deliver fresh fish. I think my lion would really like fresh fish. May I have some for him, Edward? Of course. So Thomas's driver put some fresh fish into the lion's crate. Thank you, Edward. I must hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Edward was surprised. <gasps> Clattering coaches. Stop, Thomas. The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop, and he didn't listen. Then Thomas saw Toby. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Buff, my boiler, how exciting. I only have straw in my freight cars. I'm sure my lion would really like some soft straw to lie on. May I have some for him, Toby? Of course. So Thomas's driver put some soft straw into the lion's crate. Thank you, Toby. I really have to hurry. The mayor will be waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Toby was surprised. Uh-oh, trembling trucks. Stop, Thomas. The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop, and he didn't listen. Thomas's pistons pumped and his wheels whirred. He couldn't wait to deliver his lion. He chuffed his hardest and raced on towards Knapford Station. At last, Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford. Sir Topham Hatt was there. So were the other engines. I'm very excited, Thomas. This is a big day. The Lion of Sodor is here. Thomas was uncoupled from the flatbed, and he pulled away to join the other engines. The workman carefully opened the lion's crate. Then the engines gasped. The lion of Sodor wasn't a real lion at all. It was a statue. And now it was covered in sticky syrup, fresh fish, and straw. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Thomas, 
This is a terrible mess. Gordon and James laughed, and Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I thought I had a real lion in my crate. I wanted to take extra special care of it. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue. So Sir Topham had told Thomas all about the Lion of Sodor, and the other engines listened carefully. So you see, Thomas, it was the most famous statue on Sodor. Then it broke. This is the shiny new statue we have been waiting for. The mayor is coming at tea time. And now look at it. I'll make sure it's clean, sir. I promise the Lion of Sodor will be shiny and new again in no time. Very well, Thomas. Thomas still felt very silly. Cheer up, Thomas. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue either. It all happened a long, long time ago. Not many engines remember that time. We tried to tell you, but you didn't stop. I'm sorry, Henry. I should have listened. Now I must hurry. I must get the Lion of Sodor cleaned right away. Why don't you take it to the washdown? This time, Thomas listened. What a good idea. Thank you, Henry. Thomas was coupled to the flatbed, and he chuffed quickly away. Thomas took the Lion of Sodor to the washdown. Soon, the sticky mess was washed off. That looks much better, Thomas. But now the statue isn't shiny. Take it to the Steamworks, Thomas. They'll polish it until it sparkles and shines. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Edward. That's a very good idea. Victor will know just what to do. And Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas took the Lion of Sodor to the steamworks. Workmen polished the statue until it shined and sparkled, just as Edward had said. The Lion of Sodor looks much better now, Thomas. But it's nearly tea time. The mayor will soon be at Knapford, and it's a long way. Take the track by the windmill. That'll get you there in time. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Toby. That's a good idea. Thomas took the shortcut past the windmill. He huffed and puffed as fast as his pistons could pump towards Napford. Children cheered and passengers waved as Thomas chuffed by. Everyone wanted to see the Lion of Sodor, and everyone wanted Thomas to stop. I can't stop now. I mustn't be late. The mayor will be at Napford, and he won't wait. And Thomas whooshed on his way. Thomas puffed proudly into Napford Station. The mayor had just arrived. He was delighted to see the new Lion of Sodor. The statue shined and sparkled in the sun. Well done, Thomas. This is the finest statue I've ever seen. And the cleanest! <laughs> Everyone cheered. And Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. Slippy Sodor. It was a very special day on the island of Sodor. The Mr. Bubbles clown show was coming to town. Mr. Bubbles was famous. He could blow the biggest bubbles ever seen. All the engines were happy and excited, except for Thomas. He had a cracked funnel and had to puff to the steamworks for repairs. At the steamworks, everything was huffing and puffing and steaming and wishing, everything except Thomas. He waited sadly on the turntable for Victor to arrive. Thomas didn't like it when he needed repairs. It meant waiting inside and not having fun out on his branch line. Don't look so miserable, Thomas. We'll find you a nice spare funnel and have you out and about in no time. Kevin, let's see what we have for our good friend Thomas. Yes, boss, coming right up. Sorry, boss, it was a slip of the hook. Oh, Kevin. Well, that won't do at all, my friend. This funnel is much too small. Kevin, let's try something a little larger. Yes, boss. Right away, boss. 
Suffering Sodor, Kevin. What are you doing? Sorry, boss. It was a slip of the hook. Yes, we know, Kevin. We know. Try this one for size, Thomas. No, 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 no. This one is too large. We only have one more spare funnel, boss. I'll be back in two toots of a whistle. Let's hope it's a good fit, my friend, or you'll be here for quite a while. <sighs> here it is, Thomas. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, Thomas. It was a slip of the hook. I know, Kevin. I know. Magnificent. A perfect fit. This funnel makes me feel silly. Not at all, my friend. It's... it's... splendid. It will help you puff very well until your old funnel is fixed. Now chuff along. I hear that Mr. Bubbles has a very special special for you at Brendan Docks. Thomas chuffed into Brendan. He was very unhappy. Mr. Bubbles was waiting. He was very happy to see Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Mr. Bubbles has a very important job for you, Thomas. This is my very special bubble liquid. It makes the biggest bubbles you have ever seen. I need it for my show this afternoon. Please take it to Knapford Station. So Thomas backed up slowly and carefully to the flatbed and was coupled up. Now you mustn't spill any of the liquid, Thomas. Puff slowly and carefully. Yes, sir. We'll meet you at Knapford. Then James chuffed up. Hello, Thomas. That's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back. And he didn't like James laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away as quickly as he could. He forgot all about going slowly and carefully. Later, Thomas stopped at a crossing. He saw Gordon. Hello, Thomas. Oh, that's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back. And he didn't like Gordon laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away from Gordon as quickly as he could. He wasn't thinking about going slowly and carefully. Bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road. But Thomas didn't notice. Sir Topham Hatt was driving Mr. Bubbles on the road. Then there was trouble. The car skidded and skated right into a muddy ditch. Thomas raced on. He stopped at a signal and saw Henry in a siding. Hello, Thomas. Oh, that's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back. And he didn't like Henry laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away from Henry as quickly as he could. He still wasn't thinking about going slowly and carefully. Sir Topham Hatt and Mr. Bubbles drove toward a bridge. Slow down, Thomas. You're spilling my bubble liquid. But Thomas didn't hear them. More bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road. Sir Topham Hatt's car skidded and skated right into a haystack. But Thomas didn't notice. He went even faster. And so did Sir Topham Hatt and Mr. Bubbles. Thomas didn't see them, but he did see a red signal. Thomas put on his brakes. More bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road. Sir Topham Hatt's car skidded and skated right into a pond. But Thomas was too worried about his funny funnel to notice. He raced on towards Knapford. At last, Thomas puffed into Knapford just as Sir Topham Hatt and Mr. Bubbles arrived. Sir Topham Hatt was very cross. Thomas, you were going much too fast. The special bubble liquid splished and splashed out of the tank. And now the tank is empty. And it's almost time for my show to start. 
The children will be very disappointed. Thomas felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. The only special bubble liquid left is at Brendam Docks. Now, there isn't time to pick it up before the show. Yes, there is. I'm sure I can puff to Brendam and back in time for your show. <laughs> very well, Thomas. But this time, you must be careful. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Soon, Thomas arrived back at Brendam Docks. A new tank of bubble liquid was loaded onto his flatbed, and Thomas puffed carefully away. Thomas saw Edward at a crossing. Hello, Thomas. That's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't like Edward laughing at his funny funnel. But this time, Thomas didn't pump his pistons and race away from Edward as quickly as he could. He chuffed carefully on to Napford. Then, Thomas puffed past some children. The children saw his funny funnel. They were excited. They thought Thomas was going to be part of Mr. Bubbles' show. Thomas was surprised. He gave the children an extra loud toot. The children laughed even more. Thomas liked to see the children laughing. They're laughing at my funny funnel. It makes them happy. And that made Thomas happy. Thomas steamed back into Napford. The children cheered. Well done, Thomas. You haven't spilled one drop of my special bubble liquid. And you're just in time for my show. Later, the children clapped and cheered at the Mr. Bubbles Clown Show. They had never seen such big bubbles. Then, the children spotted that Thomas's funny funnel looked just like Mr. Bubbles' hat. Thank you, Thomas, the funniest engine on Sodor. Soon, everyone was laughing. And Thomas, most of all. <laughs> Thomas and the pigs. There are lots and lots of farms on the island of Sodor. There are farms with sheep. There are farms with cows. There are farms with goats. Thomas likes visiting all the farms. But his favorite farm of all was Farmer Trotter's pig farm. Thomas liked their curly tails and the funny noises they made. Thomas liked to visit Farmer Trotter's pig farm as often as he could. One day, Thomas was watching the pigs roll in the mud. Farmer Trotter was happy to see Thomas. Hello, Farmer Trotter. Hello, Thomas. I have some very special news. One of my pigs is going to have piglets today. Thomas was excited. I can't wait to see them. I need some soft straw for the piglets. I'd like you to go to Farmer McCall's right now to collect it. He will be waiting for you. Thomas was happy to help. Yes, Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away with his empty flatbed. On his way to Farmer McCall's, Thomas thought about the pigs. I'm sure the piglets will like the soft straw. I wonder if there's anything else they like. Thomas puffed up to the dairy. He saw Percy. Thomas told Percy all about the piglets. How exciting! I wish I could see them, but I have to deliver this milk. Thomas looked at the milk churns. An idea flew into his funnel. I'm sure the piglets would like some milk. May I have some? Of course you can, Thomas. So the milk churns were loaded onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you, Percy. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And he steamed away. 
Thomas felt pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then Thomas saw James. James was at an orchard. The trees were full of juicy red apples. Hello, James. Hello, Thomas. Thomas told James all about the piglets. The piglets will soon be born. I must collect some soft straw for them. I wish I could see the piglets, but I have to deliver these boxes of apples to the village. Thomas looked at the juicy red apples. I'm sure the piglets would like some juicy red apples. May I have some? Of course you can. So Thomas's flatbed was loaded with lots and lots of juicy red apples. Thank you, James. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. Thomas chuffed quickly away. He felt very pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then Thomas saw some children. They were collecting shiny brown Hello, chestnuts. Thomas. Hello. Thomas told the children all about the piglets. They were very excited. <laughs> I'm sure the piglets would like some shiny brown chestnuts to eat. Please, may I have some for them? The children were delighted to give Thomas some of their shiny brown chestnuts. Thank you. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And Thomas puffed away. Bye. He felt even more pleased. At last, Thomas chuffed to Farmer McColl's farm. Farmer McColl was waiting. He was cross. Thomas, you're late. Where have you been? I'm sorry, Farmer McCall. I stopped to collect some milk, some juicy red apples, and some shiny brown chestnuts for the piglets. Farmer McColl looked at Thomas's flatbed. He saw the milk, the juicy red apples, and shiny brown chestnuts. Your flatbed is full. You have no room for straw now. Fizzling fireboxes. I didn't think about that. I hope the piglets will like the milk, the apples, and the chestnuts just as much as straw. I must puff straight back to Farmer Trotter's. The piglets will be born soon. So Thomas pumped his pistons and chuffed quickly away. Thomas pulled up at the farm. Farmer Trotter was waiting. He looked at Thomas's full flatbed. He was surprised. Thomas, where's the soft straw? I thought the piglets would like these things just as much as straw. No, Thomas. Piglets need soft straw, and they're about to be born. Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I'll empty my flatbed, then I'll puff back to Farmer McCall's as fast as I can. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. The piglets will need it by the end of the day. Thomas saw Percy at the water tower. Thomas, I know something else the piglets would like. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop. Bye, Thomas. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Next, Thomas saw James at a junction. Hello, Thomas. I've been thinking about the piglets. I'm sure they'd like... I'm sorry, James. I can't stop. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Thomas whooshed and he wished. He huffed and he puffed until he arrived at Farmer McCall's farm. It was late. Hello, Farmer McCall. Now I have plenty of room for the soft straw for the piglets. Could you load it right now? Of course I can, Thomas. Thank you, Farmer McCall. I must hurry. Thomas's pistons pumped and his axles ached. I must puff fast. There's no time for delay. The piglets need straw by the end of the day. 
At last, Thomas arrived at Farmer Trotter's pig farm. It was now nearly nighttime. Thomas saw that the pigs had gone. <gasps> Cinders and ashes! I'm too late! You're just in time, Thomas. I need that soft straw right away. Farmer Trotter unloaded the straw from Thomas's flatbed. And he took it away to make a nice soft bed for the piglets. The piglets have just been born. Thomas was delighted. Bubbling boilers! Look how small they are and how sweet. Thomas could see the piglets really like the soft straw. Aw, that little piglet is looking at me. I think I'll call him Thomas. Thomas was so happy. His axles tingled and his boiler bubbled. Toby's new whistle. It was a bright sunny day on the island of Soda. All the engines chuffed cheerfully. Everyone was smiling. Everyone except Toby. Toby was at the steamworks. Toby's bell had stopped working. It was covered in rust and it didn't clang and chime anymore. It had to stay in the steamworks to be cleaned. So Toby was very sad. Victor didn't have another bell for Toby, so he had to be fitted with a new steam whistle. Easy does it, Kevin, my friend. Left a little, no, right a little. Perfect, very good, my friend. How does that feel, Toby? Toby thought the new whistle felt very strange. It was much bigger than his old bell. He was worried. I've never used a steam whistle before. James chuffed into the steamworks with Sir Topham hat. Hello, Toby. That's a three-chime steam whistle. I used to have one of those. This made Toby even more worried. Is it a good whistle? It's the best. It is the loudest whistle in the whole of Sodor. The loudest? Yes, it's loud and booming. Everyone will hear you coming. Toby didn't like this. He didn't like loud and booming noises. He liked the tingling-a-ling of his old bell. Toby, you must go to Knapford and collect Lady Hat. She is waiting, so don't be late. Yes, sir. So Toby chuffed off to Knapford Station with his new three-chime steam whistle. I wish I had my old bell back. I don't know how to use this new, loud and booming three-chime steam whistle. Then an idea flew into Toby's funnel. If I puff slowly and carefully, I won't need to use my whistle at all. I can do all my jobs and wait for my old bell to be fixed. This made Toby feel much happier. Toby steamed slowly through Sodor. Gordon huffed and puffed impatiently behind him. Out of my way, Toby, you old steam tram. You're making me late. Later, some cows were on the tracks in front of Toby. He couldn't puff past them. Go away, cows, please. I need to chuff through. But the cows didn't take any notice of Toby. They didn't move. They were too busy mooing and chewing. Toby knew what he needed to do. He needed to blow his new steam whistle. But Toby was scared. I don't want to use this new three-chime steam whistle. I wish I had my little bell back. Then, another idea flew into Toby's funnel. I know what I can do. I'll get help. So, Toby reversed down the track to find help. Some farm workers were working in the field. Excuse me? Hello? Hello? The farm workers didn't hear Toby. Toby blew steam and rattled his rods. 
But the farm workers still didn't hear Toby. They were too far away. Bust my buffers. They can't hear me. Toby knew he should use his new steam whistle, but he was still too scared. I wish I had my little bell back. So Toby puffed on. Somewhere he had to find help. But Toby couldn't find anybody to help him. So he huffed back to the cows. I do hope the cows have gone back to their field now. But the cows hadn't gone back to their field. They were still mooing and chewing all over the tracks. Oh, no! Toby tried to biff them with his cow catcher, but they still wouldn't move. Oh, no, Henrietta. I think we're trapped. <gasps> then there was trouble. Toby heard a noise that made his wheels wobble. Another engine is coming. They'll crash into the cows. The engine steamed around the corner. It was Thomas. Thomas was racing like the wind. His firebox was fuming, and his boiler was burning brightly. I have to tell Thomas about the cows. I'll have to use this new whistle. Toby closed his eyes. His firebox flared. Steam blew into his new three-chime steam whistle. It was the loudest whistle anyone had ever heard on Sodor. What was that? It was a three-chime steam whistle. They're the best whistles ever. I wonder who blew that? Thomas heard the three-chime steam whistle. Cinders and ashes, I must stop. He applied his brakes. Thomas screeched and skidded. Sparks flew and tracks trembled. Toby didn't dare look. Phew. Thank you, Toby. Your whistle told me there was trouble ahead. Toby felt very proud. I'm pleased I used my three-chime steam whistle. It was even louder than my bell. Thomas was proud of his friend Toby. Together, with their whistles and wish, Toby and Thomas moved the cows from the track. Then, Toby remembered Lady Hat. Fizzling fireboxes. I've forgotten all about Lady Hat. She's waiting for me at Knapford. I must puff faster than Gordon to chuff there on time. Don't worry, Toby. I'll puff with you. We're sure to make it together. Thomas and Toby puffed and puffed toward Knapford Station. Suddenly, Sir Topham had arrived. He was very cross. Toby, Lady Hat waited for a very long time. Now Gordon is taking her home. Toby was upset. He knew he hadn't been a really useful engine. I'm sorry, sir. Then, Toby stopped. He saw something ahead. There's a fallen tree across the tracks. And Gordon is steaming straight towards it. Oh, no! Don't worry, sir. I know just what to do. Toby bubbled his boiler and pumped his pistons. He blew his three-chime steam whistle as loudly and as boomingly as he could. Gordon heard Toby's whistle. He applied his brakes and screeched to a halt. Toby, did you blow that whistle so loudly? Yes, I did. It was my new three-chime steam whistle. For a steam tram, you have a lot of puff. Thank you. Well done, Toby. Toby couldn't have felt more proud. Good job, Toby. Toby was back at the steamworks. His little bell was ready. It glistened and gleamed as if it were brand new. Toby was happy. Bye-bye, big new steam whistle. Victor and Kevin had heard the news that Toby had saved Thomas and Gordon. Well, Toby, my friend, it sounds as if you had a very busy day. Did you like the new three-chime steam whistle? It was very useful. You can keep it if you like, my friend. No, thank you. My bell is the best of all. <laughs> Steamy Sodor. All the engines on Sodor like to be really useful. 
they huff and they puff to do their best for Sir Topham Hatt's railway. And sometimes that means doing a job they have never done before. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt had a new job for Thomas. Victor has to go to the transfer yards. He has to see one of the little engines. He will be away all day. You must look after the steamworks, Thomas. Victor will tell you all you need to know. Make sure you listen carefully. Yes, sir. Thomas was excited. The Sodor Steamworks is one of my favorite places on the island. Today, I'm going to be in charge. That's a very important job, Thomas. Good luck. Thank you, Percy. And Thomas puffed proudly away to the steamworks and his new job. Victor was waiting for Thomas at the steamworks. Thomas was very excited. His boiler bubbled and his firebox fizzed. Hello, my friend. This is a big day for you. The steamworks will be very busy. Not too busy for me, Victor. I like being busy. And <laughs> that's good, my friend. Now, when an engine comes in, you have to listen carefully to their problem. If you need help, ask Kevin. That's right, Thomas. When you're in a fix, look no further. Just ask Kevin. It'll save you bother. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Are you listening, Thomas? Yes, Victor. But Thomas was too excited to listen. He wanted to get on with his very important job. Don't worry, Victor. I know just what to do. Hurry, Victor. You'll be late for the little engines. Very well, my friend. Good luck. And Victor steamed away. Thomas was now in charge. Soon, Spencer steamed sulkily into the steamworks. His shiny silver paintwork was scratched and scuffed. Spencer was surprised to see Thomas. Uh, where's Victor? He's away today. I'm in charge. Spencer was worried. Oh my, Spencer. You are in a mess. I'll check you over from wheels to whistle. Put Spencer up on the hoist, please, Kevin. Kevin was worried. Are you sure, boss? I mean, Thomas? I don't think Spencer needs to go on the hoist. I mean, he needs a repaint, boss. But Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. He was too excited. He was in charge of the steamworks. Put Spencer up on the hoist, Kevin. Over here, Spencer. <laughs> please, if you don't mind. Please, <laughs> thank you. So, Spencer huffed huffily to the hoist. Then, Henry chuffed in. Henry wasn't well. He spluttered and stuttered. He wheezed and sneezed. Henry was surprised to see Thomas. What are you doing here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Henry sighed. Then, he wheezed. Then, he sneezed. Footplates and fenders. I know just what's wrong with you, Henry. You have been given the wrong coal. Henry gasped. No, Thomas, it's not my... <laughs> but Thomas wasn't listening. Don't worry, Henry. We'll have you puffing proudly in no time. Kevin, bring over some of Henry's special coal, please. But, but what about Spencer, boss? But Thomas wasn't listening. Quick as you can, Kevin. So Kevin trundled to the coal. Spencer sat sniffly by the hoist. Henry <laughs> spluttered and stuttered. And Thomas felt pleased and proud. I like being in charge of the steamworks. Then, James steamed snootily in. Straw and twigs blocked his funnel. Why are you here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Bubbling boilers, you are in a mess. What happened to you? I can't puff properly. <laughs> I know just what you need. Kevin! Yes, boss? I mean, Thomas? James needs a new funnel. No, I don't. But Thomas wasn't listening to James. But what about Henry's coal and Spencer on the hoist? Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. Find the spare funnel, please. Kevin was now very confused. To find the funnel, he had to put down Henry's coal. But first, he had to raise Spencer on the hoist. It was all too much for Kevin. 
Oh dear, boss. Uh, Thomas. Don't worry, Kevin. I'm in charge. Then there was trouble. Kevin reeled and rolled back towards the hoist. And with a biff and a bash, he hit a big green button. That made Spencer shudder into the air. Trembling tracks, what's happening? Kevin gasped. <gasps> Heaving hooks! Sorry, Spencer. Then Kevin dropped Henry's coal right in front of Henry's nose. Bust my boiler and crashing coals. Kevin rocked and rolled into James. Mind my shiny red paintwork. James was so upset, he blew the biggest puff of steam he had ever blown all over Victor. Victor had just arrived from the transfer yards. Now, he was covered from buffer to buffer in twigs, soot, and straw. Victor's wheels wobbled and his steam stuttered. <gasps> Sizzling sodor! What has happened to my beautiful steamworks? Thomas looked at Victor, and then at the mess and the muddle. Cinders and ashes! This is all my fault! No, boss! I mean, Thomas! I'm sure it's my fault. I'm sorry, boss. I did try to say, boss. No, Kevin. It's not your fault. I didn't listen to Victor. I didn't listen to you. And I didn't listen to my friends. I was too excited and too silly. I think, my friend, you are right. What will you do now? I'm sorry to all of you. Now I'll listen to you, and I'll make sure you're all fixed properly. So, Victor and Thomas went first to Spencer. I don't need checking from wheels to whistle. I need new paint for my scuffs and scratches. This time, Thomas listened. Don't worry, Spencer. You'll be sparkling silver in no time. That made Spencer very happy. Next, Victor and Thomas talked to Henry. I have my special coal, but there's something wrong with my firebox. It makes me <laughs> wheeze and sneeze. Don't worry, Henry. Your firebox will be cleaned. You won't wheeze and sneeze anymore. And Thomas was right. Pumping pistons. No more wheezes and sneezes. That's much better. Lastly, Victor and Thomas listened to James. I don't need a new funnel. I need my old funnel cleaned and polished. James, you will have the most perfectly polished funnel on Sodor. Oh. James's funnel was shining like the sun. James smiled from fender to footplate. Soon, all the engines were fixed. They were ready to be really useful again. Well done, my friend. Time to go home. Not quite, Victor. It's time to say thank you to Kevin. Anytime, boss. I mean, Thomas. <laughs> and everyone laughed and laughed and laughed. Henry's Good Deeds. There are lots of beautiful birds on the island of Sodor. The engines know their names and their songs. One day, the engines were especially excited. A new bird had been seen on the island. Sir Topham had arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. He had important news. The Sodor Warbler has arrived back on the island. Very few people have ever seen this bird, so a lot of visitors will be coming to our island. You will all be very busy taking them to spot the bird. Remember your passenger cars at all times, and remember not to frighten the warbler. Henry was worried for the warbler. Do you think the Sodor warbler will be scared of engines? No, Henry, not if you're really useful, and I need you to be really useful. Yes, sir. You must deliver a nesting pole to Bluff's Cove. Percy was puzzled. Um... What's a nesting pole? It's a tall pole with a shelf on top. Birds build their nests on it. Percy liked this idea. Do you understand, Henry? 
Yes, sir. I will deliver the pole straight away. Good. We hope the Sodor Warbler will make its home here once more. That's a very exciting special, Henry. Henry was happy. He puffed away proudly. Later, Henry clickety-clacked along the track. Ahead, he could see Thomas with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas had stopped. That's strange. Henry shoved slowly up to Thomas. Is anything wrong, Thomas? No, Henry. I'm letting Farmer McCall cross with his sheep. Henry could see the sheep tripping and tapping across the tracks. Thomas, you helped me. That's a good deed. Well done. You're welcome, Farmer McCall. Thomas chuffed away cheerfully. Henry puffed and puzzled. I would like to help someone. They will call it a good deed, and they will say, well done, Henry. This made Henry feel very happy. I'm sure I can deliver the nesting pole and do good deeds. So Henry huffed happily on. Soon, Henry saw Farmer Trotter's pink pigs. They were snuffling and sniffing sadly at the side of the track. Hmm, those pigs don't look very happy. Then, Henry saw that the pigs were looking at the muddy field on the other side of the tracks. I know what's wrong. Those pigs want to roll in the muddy field. If I stop here, those pigs can cross safely. They won't be scared anymore. So Henry stopped, and the pigs tripped and trotted across the tracks. Soon, the pigs weren't pink anymore. They were brown, muddy, and very happy. Farmer Trotter wasn't happy at all. I wanted pink pigs to take to the county fair. Henry was sorry. Oh dear, Farmer Trotter is cross. I didn't help at all. Suddenly, an idea flew into Henry's funnel. I'll reverse back down the track. Then the pigs will have more room to cross. Henry pumped his pistons. His wheels whirred. He puffed steam and he chuffed backwards. This should help Farmer Trotter. But it didn't help. The pigs were scared by Henry's steam and the whir of his wheels. They scattered and clattered into the apple crates. The apples rolled everywhere. This made the pigs very happy. They munched and scrunched the rosy red apples. But now they wouldn't move from the tracks. That made Farmer Trotter even more cross. Bust my buffers. My idea wasn't a good deed at all. Just then, Thomas puffed up on the down line. Annie and Clarabel were full of visitors to see the Sodor Warbler. Cinders and ashes. How am I going to puff through? The Sodor Warbler has been spotted in the Fenland Fields. I'm in a hurry. I'm sorry, Thomas. I was trying to help Farmer Trotter. I'm sure I can help you. I'll take your visitors to the Fenland Fields. We'll be there in good time. Thomas thought this was a good idea. Thank you, Henry. The visitors were surprised. They stepped and scurried through the pigs to Henry's passenger car. Henry felt pleased. I'm sure this is a good deed, and I'm sure I still have time to deliver the nesting pole. Henry puffed and huffed his hardest all the way to the Fenland Fields. Here we are. Watch out for the warbler. The visitors were very excited. They opened the carriage doors carefully. They didn't want to scare the soda warbler away. Henry felt very happy. At last, I've been helpful. I've done a good deed. Henry tooted a loud goodbye. Then there was trouble. A colorful bird flapped and flew from a tree high into the sky and away. It was the Sodor Warbler. The visitors moaned and groaned. Fizzling fireboxes! The bird was scared of my loud whistle. Henry steamed sadly away. 
I wanted to help the pigs. I wanted to help Farmer Trotter. I wanted to help the visitors. But I haven't helped anybody. I've done no good deeds. And I haven't delivered the nesting pole. Henry felt terrible. Henry huffed towards Bluff's Cove. He had to deliver the nesting pole. I don't think anyone is ever going to say, well done, Henry, to me. Henry waited at a junction. His wheels wobbled with worry. Now I'm sure I'll be late with the nesting pole. Sir Topham Hat will be cross with me. Oh dear, oh dear. Suddenly, a colorful bird flew from a tree. Henry was too sad to smile at the bird. The bird landed on Henry's buffer. At least I can give that bird a rest and a ride. So, Henry and the beautiful bird chuffed on towards Bluff's Cove. Henry puffed to the halt. A lot of visitors were waiting. They were hoping to see the Sodo Warbler. I hope they'll be pleased that I have delivered the nesting pole. But the visitors weren't just pleased. They were amazed. They smiled and pointed and took out their cameras. Henry was surprised. Oh, the visitors seem very pleased to see me. I can't think why. After all, no one has said, well done, Henry. Well done, Henry. You have brought the soda warbler to us. Hooray for Henry. Henry blinked and blushed. The bird I carried on my buffer was the Sodor Warbler. Then Thomas arrived with more visitors. Well done, Henry. Henry was so proud, his firebox fizzed and his boiler bubbled. And this time, I wasn't even trying to do a good deed. Soon the nesting pole was up. The Sodor Warbler looked snug and sleepy in its nest at the top. I think our friend likes its new home. Welcome home, Mr. Warbler. <laughs> and well done, Henry. <sighs> the biggest present of all. For all the engines on the island of Sodor, there are jobs to be done, visitors to meet, and friends to greet. One day, there was a very special friend to greet. Hero was coming back to Sodor. He was to help with the summer visitors. Thomas and Percy waited for him at Brendam Docks. I'm so excited, my firebox is fizzing. And my boiler is bubbling. Hero, our special friend, is coming back to Sodor. Hello, my good friends. I have missed you. We missed you too, Hero. The three engines tooted and hooted with happiness. Welcome back, Hero. First, you must go to the steamworks. Victor will check your engine after your long journey. Of course, sir. Every day, I want to be a really useful engine. Then, you must go to Knapford Station. I will meet you there. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Hero puffed proudly away. I want there to be a welcome party for Hero at Knapford. Percy, you must collect Lady Hat and bring her to the party. Thomas, you must tell the engines to chuff quickly to Knapford for the party. Then Sir Topham had left. Thomas and Percy were excited. Oh my, a welcome party will make Hero very happy. A welcome present would make Hero even happier. That's a good idea. I must go now, Thomas. Lady Hat will be waiting. Then Thomas steamed slowly away. I'm sure I'll find something special for Hero. I'll look as I puff round the island, telling my friends about the party. Thomas clickety-clacked along the track. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. 
I'm sure there'll be something special at Farmer McCall's farm. So, Thomas pumped his pistons and raced to Farmer McCall's farm. Emily was there. She was collecting straw. Hero has come back. I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's exciting. Good luck, Thomas. Emily puffed away. Thomas didn't tell her about the party at Knapford. He was too busy looking for a welcome present. Thomas saw the big brown barn. Perhaps Hero would like a barn. He could keep special things safe in a barn. But the barn is too big. And Thomas steamed slowly away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then, another idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'm sure there'll be something special at the quarry. So, Thomas huffed happily to the quarry. Mavis, James, Toby, and Henry were there. They were busy shunting slate cars. Hero has come back. I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's a wonderful idea, Thomas. Henry, James, and Toby chuffed away to shunt freight cars. Thomas didn't tell them about the party at Knapford. Thomas looked all around the quarry, but all he could see was Sodor's slate. Slate is very special to Sodor, but slate is too small to be a present. I must look for something else. So Thomas chuffed away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then Thomas gasped. The steam works. I'm sure there'll be something special there. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully to the steam works. Hello, Kevin. I'm looking for a welcome present for Hero. It has to be something special. Thomas saw an old bell. I'm sure Hero would like a bell. Then everyone would hear him coming. Good idea, Thomas. Good idea. But when Kevin picked up the bell, it clanged and clanked. It rang and rattled. Trembling tracks. That's too noisy. Hero will soon be at Knapford to see Sir Topham Hatt. Bust my buffers. I must hurry. Thomas raced out of the steamworks. He didn't tell Victor and Kevin about the party either. Thomas raced into Knapford Station. Hero was waiting, all alone. Thomas gasped. Cinders and ashes. I haven't found a welcome present for Hero, and I haven't told anyone about the party. This won't make Hero happy. Thomas felt terrible. Then his boiler bubbled and his wheels whirred. Hello, Hero. Goodbye, Hero. And Thomas steamed swiftly out of the station. Thomas puffed to Farmer McCall's. Emily, chuff as fast as you can to Knapford. Sir Topham Hatt is having a welcome party for Hero. Tell everyone you pass. Thomas, I've had a marvelous idea for a special present for Hero. I'm sure he would like a bright, shiny dome. Victor must have one. Thomas was stern. Thank you, Emily. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Mavis, Toby, James, and Henry were still at the quarry. You must all chuff to Knapford as fast as you can for Hero's welcome party. Thomas, I think I know exactly what Hero would like as a special present. A new glowing lamp. That would be very special. Thomas was firm. Thank you, Henry. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas steamed swiftly away to the steamworks. Kevin, please tell all the engines to race to Knapford for Hero's party. My friend, Kevin and I have been thinking, what about a new shiny buffer for Hero? I think Hero would find that very special. Don't you think so, boss? Uh, Thomas? Thomas knew what he thought. I think now is not the time to find presents. Thank you, but you must tell the engines to hurry, please. And Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed away. 
Thomas clickety-clack down the track this way and that, telling his friends all about the party. Thomas puffed into Knapford Station. His face was red and his firebox glowed. Thomas, where have you been? Hero's welcome party is almost over. I'm sorry, sir. I was trying to find you a welcome present, Hero. Something special from Sodor. But I couldn't find anything. I'm sorry. Hero smiled. Thomas, my friend, you must not worry. My welcome present is right here. Being with my friends is the biggest present of all. And the most special present from Sodor. There is nothing more special. Then Thomas smiled and smiled. He knew Hero was right, and so did all his friends. Straight to the steamworks. James was pleased. Thank you, sir. I will be the smartest engine on the whole island. James whistled with pride. James puffed proudly into the steamworks. The workmen were waiting. First, they took off James's old coat of red paint. Then they applied a special pink paint. The pink paint was to go under the new red coat. It was to keep the water out. Soon, James was covered from fender to firebox in bright pink paint. Just then, Sir Topham had arrived. My granddaughter is having her birthday party today. Emily was to pick her up at Maithwaite Station, but she has broken down. The other engines are busy. You must collect the children and take them to the party. But, sir, I'm not ready. You're quite ready enough, James. Leave right away. The party starts at tea time. You mustn't be late. Sir Topham had left. James was upset. Oh, no. Pink is a silly color. I don't want anyone to see me looking silly. James puffed up to a junction. Emily was there. She was waiting for the workmen. Cinders and ashes. You're bright pink, James. <laughs> Emily laughed and laughed. <laughs> Oh, no. Everyone is going to laugh at me because I'm pink. James didn't want to be laughed at. Then an idea flew into his funnel. If I see any other engines on the way to the children, I'll hide. James chuffed through the countryside. Ahead, he could see Toby puffing along the track. I don't want Toby to see my pink paint. He'll think I'm silly. I'll hide under this tree until he's gone. So James chuffed under the branches of a willow tree. Toby puffed slowly towards him. James kept as quiet as he could so that Toby wouldn't hear him. Suddenly, James heard a whistle he knew well. It was Gordon. Clickety clack, express on the track. With a whoosh and a whoosh and a whistling wind, Gordon thundered down the express line. The branches of the tree blew up in the air. There was James in his bright pink paint. Toby stopped. He was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes, James. You're a big pink engine. <laughs> <laughs> James felt very silly. He didn't like being laughed at. So, he steamed swiftly away. James puffed on towards Maithwaite. I mustn't be late for the children. Then James saw Diesel. Oh no, it's Diesel. He's sure to laugh. I have to hide quickly. James saw some freight cars. They were piled high with coal. James puffed into the siding and hid behind the freight cars. This is a good hiding place. 
Then Diesel oiled into the siding. Fizzling fenders! Diesel had to shunt the coal cars. Diesel shunted away the cars that James was hiding behind. So James puffed to the next cars. Then Diesel shunted those away as well. Quickly, James rolled behind the last two freight cars. Then Diesel shunted them away. Oh, no. Diesel was surprised. What are you doing, James? You're a big pig steamy. <laughs> James felt terrible. Being laughed at by Diesel was worst of all. So James chuffed quickly away. James knew he was getting late. He had to pick up the children before tea time. I will take a shortcut through this tunnel. That way, I'm sure to chuff to Maithwaite on time. James puffed out of the tunnel. Then he heard a whistle. It's Gordon. Oh, no. I don't want Gordon to laugh at my silly pink paint. I have to hide. So James reversed back into the tunnel and waited. Gordon pulled up to the tunnel. He could see steam. Who's hiding in there? Express coming through. Come on out. James didn't want to come out. He was sure Gordon would laugh at him. Then Thomas and Percy puffed up. What's happening? Who's in there? I don't know, but the express can't wait. James knew the engines were waiting for him. And so were the children. If I keep hiding, I'll be late to pick up the children, and they'll be late for their party. So with a puff and a huff, James chuffed slowly out of the tunnel. He was very unhappy. James, <laughs> you're all <laughs> pink. What a funny color. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hide too if I was bright pink. James felt terrible. All the engines were laughing, but James knew what he had to do. I feel very silly, but I can't let the children down. James hurried to Maithwaite as fast as his pistons could pump. James saw Spencer at a junction. Spencer thought James looked very silly. <laughs> oh dear, James. Bright pink really isn't your color. <laughs> James didn't like this. But this time, even though he felt silly, he didn't hide. I mustn't be late for the children. Then James saw Henry passing by. <laughs> My word, you do look pink. But James didn't hide. He felt silly, but he didn't stop. Must collect the children. Must collect the children. James puffed towards Maithwaite. He could see the children waiting. I'm sure the children will laugh too. They will think I look very silly. And he steamed sadly onto the station. James pulled into Maithwaite. Sir Topham Hatt's granddaughter didn't laugh. And she didn't think James looked silly at all. She smiled. She was very excited and very happy. James! Pink is my favorite color. James couldn't believe it. Do you really like pink? I love pink, and so do all my friends. Look! Pink, pink is our favorite color. James was so happy it made his boiler bubble. I'm a very lucky engine. James puffed proudly into the town hall, just in time for the party. The children laughed and clapped their hands. James, the bright pink engine, was the hero, the early bird. On the island of Sodor, all of the engines on Sir Topham Hatt's railway are busy. Gordon pulls the express. Percy delivers the mail. And Thomas puffs and chuffs cheerfully on his branch line. One morning, Thomas's fireman fanned his firebox ready for work. Thomas saw that his best friend, Percy, wasn't there. Good morning, James. Have you seen Percy? No, I have too much to do to see Percy. 
Then, Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, Percy has popped a piston. He has to go to the steamworks to be fixed. Percy won't be able to deliver the mail tomorrow morning. You must do it for him. Thomas was excited. He had never delivered the mail before. He tooted his whistle loudly. Yes, sir. I've always wanted to deliver the mail. Make sure you do a good job, Thomas. Of course I will, sir. Don't worry, sir. Then Thomas puffed proudly away to his branch line. Thomas stopped at a crossing. Gordon was there. Percy is being fixed. Tomorrow, I'm going to deliver the mail run for him. Percy's mail run? Have you asked Percy how to do it? Don't worry, Gordon. I know all about delivering the mail. <laughs> do you indeed? Then the gate opened, and Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas worked hard all day. That night, he went to see Percy at the steamworks. Percy didn't look happy. Is your piston fixed, Percy? No, it's still broken. Don't worry. I'm going to do your mail run tomorrow. Thank you, Thomas. Shall I tell you what to do? I know what to do, Percy. Now, I have to go to sleep. I shall be up very early. Well, if you're sure, Thomas. Very sure, Percy. I have to go back to Tidmouth now. I need lots of sleep. Goodbye. Percy watched as Thomas chuffed away. The next morning, Thomas woke up very early. He felt very proud to be pulling the mail trucks. There wasn't a peep to be heard as Thomas chuffed across the island. Everyone was fast asleep. First, Thomas puffed to the quarry. I must let the quarry manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was excited. He blew his whistle very loudly. And then he chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas hadn't seen that his loud whistle had woken up Mavis. <sighs> Who's making that noise? Next, Thomas chuffed to the docks. I must let the dock manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was excited. He blew his whistle even louder. <sighs> and then he chuffed cheerfully away. What Thomas hadn't seen was that his good morning whistle had woken Cranky up. <sighs> Who woke me up? This is fun! Lastly, Thomas steamed into the steamworks. I must let the steamworks manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was so excited, he blew his whistle louder than ever. Oh. And then he huffed happily away. What Thomas hadn't seen was that he had woken Victor and Kevin up. Oh, what's that noise, boss? Uh, who knows, Kevin, who knows? Some early bird. Thomas worked hard all morning. Everywhere Thomas went, he blew his whistle loudly. Delivering the mail is fun! Soon, Thomas had delivered all the mail. It was time for him to puff back to Tidmouth Sheds for a rest. As Thomas passed through the quarry, he saw Mavis. Her freight cars were being loaded with slate. Then there was trouble. Mavis hadn't lined up her freight cars under the hopper. Slate spilled everywhere. That's strange. Mavis never makes mistakes. What Thomas didn't see was that Mavis was fast asleep under the hopper. 
That's why she had put the freight cars in the wrong place. Next, Thomas passed through the docks. Cranky was unloading some big crates from a ship. Then there was trouble. Cranky dropped the crates. They fell to the ground with a smash and a crash. That's strange. Cranky never makes mistakes. What Thomas didn't see was that Cranky had fallen fast asleep. That's why he had dropped the crates. Thomas pulled into Tidmouth's sheds. He wanted to tell Percy all about the mail delivery, but Percy wasn't there. Sir Topham Hatt was there. He was cross. Someone woke Mavis up too early by tooting too loudly on their whistle. Then someone woke up Cranky at the docks and Victor at the steamworks. Now they have all made silly mistakes. Thomas knew he had woken everyone up with his cheerful whistle. He felt terrible. I'm very sorry, sir. It was me. Then, Thomas, as Percy is still not fixed, you must do a better job tomorrow. I will, sir. I promise, sir. Then Gordon arrived. He had heard all about Thomas's trouble with the mail run. You were right, Gordon. Delivering the mail is a hard job. I should have asked Percy what to do. And this time, I will. That evening, Thomas visited Percy at the steamworks. He asked him all about delivering the mail, and Percy told him all about being quiet. The next morning, Thomas set off early, pulling the mail cars. He stopped at the quarry. This time, he didn't blow his whistle. He puffed very quietly so that he didn't wake Mavis. Next, Thomas stopped at the docks. He didn't blow his whistle here either, and he didn't wake Cranky up. Lastly, Thomas puffed into the steamworks. He dropped off the mail, and he didn't blow his whistle once. Victor stayed fast asleep. But Percy had woken up early to see his best friend, Thomas. Well done, Thomas. You did everything right. Thank you, Percy. Now I know the most important thing about delivering the mail. You have to do it quietly. Percy was so happy for his friend that he wanted to toot out loud. Then he looked at Thomas. Thomas had fallen fast asleep. Sleep well, Thomas. And Thomas snored the sleep of an engine who had done a very good job. A blooming mess. It was a special day on the island of Sodor. Knapford Station was going to be decorated. All the engines were very busy and very excited. Sir Topham Hatt was at Tidmouth Sheds. Knapford Station is being decorated. There are lots of jobs to do. Thomas, you must go to the quarry and collect slate for the new roof. Yes, sir. Emily, you must go to Maithwaite Station and collect the flowers for the new window boxes. Flowers? How lovely. I know all about flowers. I know that buttercups are yellow. Emily! And then, take them to Knapford Station. Yes, sir. Emily huffed happily to Maithwaite Station. She passed Toby. Toby was delivering wood for Knapford's new floors. Hello, Toby! Hello, Emily. Then Emily passed James. James was delivering pots of paint to paint Knapford's new walls. Hello, James. Good morning, Emily. Emily puffed up to a junction. Mavis was on the bridge above. 
But Mavis didn't say hello to Emily. Emily was surprised. Mavis! Mavis! Hello! Mavis still didn't say hello to Emily. Emily wondered what was wrong with Mavis. I know what's wrong. Mavis must be feeling sad today. At Maithwaite Station, Emily buffered up to the flatbed of flowers. There are a lot of different flowers here, Emily. Emily knew the names of all the flowers, but she didn't say a word. She was thinking about Mavis. She wanted to make Mavis happy. Then, an idea flew into her funnel. I'm sure flowers would make Mavis happy. I have lots of them. I can leave some of them at the quarry for Mavis. So, Emily didn't puff straight to Knapford Station with the flowers. She took the track to the quarry instead. Emily huffed happily into the quarry. She couldn't see Mavis anywhere. I know. I'll decorate the quarry with flowers. That will make Mavis very happy when she comes back. Emily looked for a place to put some flowers. This is the perfect place. Mavis will see the flowers here as soon as she arrives. Emily felt very pleased with herself. Now, hmm, I must find somewhere else to put some more flowers. Emily looked around. She didn't see Edward puff into the quarry behind her. But she did hear the loud crash. Fizzling fireboxes! What was that? Edward had crashed straight into the flatbed of flowers and rolled towards the hopper. Edward, look out! Those flowers are going to make Mavis happy. Pardon? Edward was confused. I'm sure flowers by the hopper would make Mavis happy. The hopper's so gray and dusty. Emily felt even more pleased with herself. Now I must find somewhere else to put some more flowers. Emily looked around. She didn't see Thomas reverse towards the hopper behind her. But she did hear the loud crash. Bubbling boilers! What was that? Cinders and ashes! Bust my buffers! Watch out for the flowers! They're going to make Mavis happy! At that moment, Mavis pulled into the quarry. Whatever has happened? Emily looked at Mavis. Mavis wasn't happy. She was very upset. What has happened to my quarry? And what are those flowers doing here? Emily gasped. The flowers haven't made Mavis happy. The quarry is in a terrible mess. And it's all my fault. Emily chuffed up to Mavis. You didn't say hello today, so I thought you were sad. I brought the flowers because I wanted to make you happy. Mavis sighed. I wasn't sad. I didn't say hello because I was thinking about all the jobs I had to do today. Emily felt very silly. I wish I had asked if you were sad. Then I wouldn't have brought the flowers and the quarry wouldn't be in a terrible mess. Mavis looked at the mess. She looked very sad. Emily wanted to think of a way to make Mavis happy. And now she knew she had to ask. Mavis, what would make you happy? I would like the quarry to be tidy and all the engines to be really useful. Emily felt very pleased she had asked Mavis. Now she knew exactly what to do to make Mavis happy. I can't move. I'm covered in slate dust and my firebox has gone out. 
worry, Thomas. I'll shunt you over to the coal hopper. You'll soon be burning brightly again. Thank you, Emily. So Emily worked hard. She puffed and she huffed, and she heaved Thomas to the coal hopper. Then she biffed and she bashed the flower beds away from the hopper so that Edward could shunt his freight car to be filled. Now, the quarry is tidy again, and all the engines are being really useful. Is there anything else that would make you happy? Yes. I want you to deliver the flowers to Knapford Station, where they should be. Right away, Mavis. At last, Emily arrived at Knapford Station. Here are the flowers for the new flower boxes. Thank you, Emily. Emily watched as the flowers were unloaded. They looked very pretty. Did you know, Thomas, that those yellow flowers are called buttercups? And those red ones, Edward, are called roses. And those white ones are daisies. Mavis puffed up. She was smiling. My! You're smiling, Mavis. Are you happy? I am. Those flowers look wonderful. And that made Emily happy, too. Snow tracks. It was winter time on the island of Sodor. It had snowed all night. The trees were white. The cottages were white. And even Sir Topham Hatt's railway was white. There was not an engine in sight. At Tidmouth Sheds, the engines looked out. Percy was very excited. It snowed! Thomas didn't like the snow. Bother. I'll have to wear my heavy snow plow. I don't like snow. You can get stuck in it. Stuff and nonsense. Snow is soft, but I am strong. It won't bother me. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Gordon, you must take some freight cars to Brendam Docks. They are needed for an important coal delivery. You are a strong engine, but snow is slippery. Puff the long way round. Yes, sir. Thomas, you must deliver bundles of firewood to the stations. Yes, sir. And then Sir Topham Hatt left. Thomas puffed with pride. That's a very special job. Not as important as mine. I shall go straight to the docks. I shall steam over every hill I come to. Gordon pumped his pistons proudly. Puff the long way round. That means, Gordon, don't go up any hills. Hills are not too steep for me. I am strong. I am the best. And Gordon weeshed out of Tidmouth sheds. Gordon huffed and he puffed. His smoke was gray against the snowy white countryside. Soon, Gordon came to a hill. This hill isn't too steep for me. I shall steam over it. So, Gordon thundered up the hill. I am special. I am the best. And he chuffed right to the top. That was easy. But Gordon found going down the other side wasn't so easy. The rails were icy. Gordon's wheels slipped and slid. He went faster and faster. Perishing pistons! Spencer was huffing up the hill. The Duke and Duchess of Boxford were on board. They were having tea. Slow down, Gordon! But Gordon couldn't slow down. Slushy snow sprayed from his wheels. Spencer was covered from footplate to fender. Rattle my rods! I'm as dirty as a ditch! But Gordon didn't hear as he clickety-clacked on the icy tracks. Gordon came to another hill. It was even bigger. 
This hill isn't too steep for me. I shall steam over it. So, Gordon thundered up the hill. I am special. I am the best. But the tracks were icy. The snow was deep. And the hill was very, very steep. Gordon steamed slower and slower. Bust my boiler. This is hard work. Wheel turn by wheel turn, Gordon huffed and puffed to the top of the hill. He felt very pleased. I am the strongest. I am the best. But at the bottom of the hill, there was deep, deep snow. The snow flew up all over Gordon's face. Bubbling boilers! I can't see! Gordon rattled off the main track and into a siding, straight into the back of some slate cars. Gordon was covered in thick gray dust. Oh, the indignity. At least I can see now. And Gordon huffed on towards the docks. The snow was deeper and deeper and deeper. Gordon could hardly huff through it. This is hard work. Now, Gordon was at the bottom of Gordon's Hill. Gordon's Hill was the biggest of all, and it was covered in thick, thick snow. Gordon's Hill isn't too steep for me. I shall steam over it. I am strong. I am the best. But Gordon didn't feel so strong anymore and he didn't feel the best. Gordon puffed against the snow. Snow is soft, and I am strong. It won't bother me. But the snow wasn't soft. It had become a giant snowball. It grew bigger and bigger. Gordon started to huff slower and slower. He thought his boiler was going to burst. Oh, my! Just then, Thomas chuffed up behind Gordon. Thank you for clearing the tracks, Gordon. Now I can deliver the firewood faster. Then there was trouble. The giant snowball was too big and too heavy. It started to push Gordon back down the hill. Look out, Thomas! Cinders and ashes! Gordon and his freight cars rolled back faster and faster. Thomas chuffed back faster and faster. He slipped into a siding, and Gordon rolled round the bend. The giant snowball will surely miss us now. But Gordon was wrong. The giant snowball rolled down the track and crashed and bashed into Thomas. Help! Gordon saw Thomas and his car of firewood lifted high in the air and derailed. Now it was Thomas who looked like a giant snowball. Luckily, no one was hurt. Gordon felt terrible. I'm not strong, and I'm not the best. It's a disaster. Gordon steamed slowly to Thomas. I'm sorry, Thomas. I'll huff my hardest to help you. Gordon heaved and hauled. He pushed and puffed, but the snow was too heavy. The snow was too thick. Gordon could not chuff through it to help his friend. I'm not strong enough, Thomas. I'll find Rocky. He's stronger than me. Gordon found Rocky at Brendam Docks. Hello, Thomas. I'll have you back on the tracks in no time. Soon, Thomas was no longer a snowball. He was a bright blue engine again. Thank you, Rocky. Now I must deliver my firewood. I'm very late. The station masters will be waiting, and they'll be very cold. I'll help you, Thomas. What about your very important job? I delivered my freight cars to the docks. Now I can help you with your very important job. Thomas was happy to have his friends help. Thank you, Gordon. Thomas and Gordon chuffed cheerfully through the snow. And when they came to a hill, they always puffed around it. Together, 
Thomas and Gordon delivered the firewood to all the stations. The station masters were very pleased to see them. At last, Gordon and Thomas puffed home to Tidmouth shed. They were tired, but they were happy to have been really useful. Gordon wished grandly. I have something very important to say. No engine is special, and every engine is best. Thomas and his friends whistled. 